This might be the easiest panfish popper I've ever tied. And I'm going to show you how to tie it. If this little floater looks familiar to you, you've probably seen it at the end of a walleye rig. These little floaters aren't just for walleye fishing anymore. And I'm going to show you how to use them to make a really great panfish popper for aggressive spring bluegills. Starting off with a foam floater in glow perch color. A link to this specific foam floater will be in the description. So always pinch the barb before getting a base of 140 ultra thread started on the back side of the hook. We're going to bring our thread all the way back to the bend of the hook before we put in a little half hitch to keep it in place. Then reach for a grizzly mini dry fly hackle pack. We're going to find a few feathers that are of equal size and make sure that we put them together, the curvature of the feather is pointing away from each other, just like we would a deceiver style fly pattern. My tails are going to be about the same length as the hook shank, and I'm going to strip off those little hackle fibers that aren't being used off the backside for the tail. Panfish bugs certainly do not have to be cleaned by any means, so if it works better for you to leave these fibers on and to tie in the whole feather, that's fine. I'm going to tie in the feather on the opposite side of the hook first, just making sure that the stem and the feather stay on the side of the hook and that the curvature of the feather bends away from me. Then I'll tie in the feather closest to me before trimming off the excess stem pieces. For a bit of flash, I absolutely love, love, love saltwater angel hair. I use this in nymphs and dry flies, midge pupa, caddis larva, anything I can really to give it a bit more of a high def look. And this stuff is absolutely awesome. So what I'm going to do is tie in about 10 strands off the back side of the tail. I'm going to bring two wraps of thread up over the material coming forward and then I'm going to fold the long tag end pieces of material back rearward before wrapping over it again just to protect these fibers from being picked apart by little bluegills that are biting the tail of this fly so they're not pulling my flash out while constantly chomping on it. Once I get it tied in, I'm going to bring my thread back to the front of the hook, up just behind the foam floaty head. I'm going to take all the remaining fibers of angel hair, the long pieces. I'm going to make consecutive wraps with it up the hook shank towards the foam head to make a really sleek, shiny black body. Now, angel hair is a pretty delicate material, so it's important to add some protection. Once you secure your angel hair at the front, Brush on a bit of UV resin and hit it with the light so that this material doesn't slip off or get snipped somewhere during the tying process. And it'll absolutely protect it later on when those aggressive bluegills are crushing on it. So with my thread already at the front side of the hook, on the back side of that foam body, I'm just going to add some hackle feather for a collar. For that, I'm going to use a black bugger hackle. Hold the hackle feather by the tip and then wet your fingers with some saliva before stroking the feather fibers rearward to splay them out. Then use your scissors to trim a little triangle on the tip of that feather before bringing it to your hook to be tied in. I don't mind bluegill flies being a bit messy and buggy, so four or five turns of this hackle should work really well. But you can make it as buggy as you want. Just make sure to preen those hackle fibers back with your thumb and your pointer finger while you're palmering it around the hook shank. Let's cover up that thread collar with a little bit of flashy Firestar dubbing. This is Peacock. Dub about a three inch noodle on your thread and wrap a nice robust dubbing ball in between your hackle and your foam head. This will help lay those hackle fibers back a little bit too. Add a few half hitches or a solid whip finish at the end and then go ahead and trim your thread. I like to go in with my scissors and trim out any rogue hackle feathers or stray Firestar dubbing that might be running amok at this point. Finally, I'm going to use a material called fish hair. It's a synthetic hair material that's primarily used for lure dressing. Trim a very small clump of hair from the hank and snip the ends so that they're nice and even. Wet the tips with saliva to bring them to a point and then push as many of those fibers through the eye of a needle that you can. Now you're definitely not going to be able to fit all these fibers in the eye of a needle. So whatever you miss, don't worry about it. Just push what you can in Center the materials in the eye of that needle, and then we're going to push this needle through the foam on the back side of that foam head to make some fish hair legs. Make sure you're holding onto the fly with your other hand while you're pushing this needle into the foam just to make it a little easier. 
pull the needle all the way through the foam body to double that fish hair over itself, and then trim off the needle to create two different legs on either side of the fly. And once you do this, you can pull the materials up to trim them together to make sure they're the same length. I like mine to be about the same length as the black hackle behind it, or close to it. Now to secure the fish hair in place, just use a little bit of UV resin at the entry point on either side, and then hit it with the light to make it solid. And that, my friends, is the finished Panfish Float Popper. Now what I love about these little guys is that they're already painted, they've got eyes on them, and they're super durable. And mixing and matching materials to different color patterns offers infinite variety for panfish on your home waters. Really hope this helps you out. Now these are all the materials you'll need to tie up some panfish float poppers for aggressive bluegills. Go to Hagensfish.com or get a hold of Lori to order the best synthetic fly tying materials on the market. When you're done tying up your favorite panfish poppers, go to Fly Tying University Facebook page and share your wisdom with one of the fastest growing fly tying communities out there. Larvalace is a proud partner of the Fish Stories Archive at fishstories.org where they are preserving fishing voices for future generations. Thanks for tying with Larvalace. Tight lines and best fishes.